Now, until now, I've been pretty rough on sucky bookkeepers, but really, I'm actually a big fan of bookkeepers. It's only the ones who suck that I hope you have understood me to be referring to in my critique. A good bookkeeper is a great asset for any entrepreneur. While Arjun was away, Team Arjun came to play. All the cats out of the bag now, folks. But we're still here bringing you our favorite and most importantly, actionable insights to Arjun's newest book, Profit First for Lawyers. We're going to help you accelerate your law firm's growth so that you can experience more profit in every aspect of your life. We're also going to be providing some behind the scenes footage at what it's really like to work with Arjun Robbins. So put your BS aside for the next few minutes and put yourself, your family, your firm, and your profit first. Welcome back to another episode of the Profit First for Lawyers podcast. I'm your host, Carly, and today we are digging deep into the oath of a CPA, how that differs from what you're probably used to, and how to know if you're working with a really great CPA. I do want to put a caveat in here that this is a topic that both Arjun and Larry Brown, whom we met in episode 24 and will hear from today, that they both feel really very strongly and passionately about. I want to make sure that your takeaway from this episode is not that Arjun dislikes CPAs or necessarily wants you to fire yours. The topic we're covering today is one of the frequently asked questions that we hear a lot. So tune in here and prepared to have your mind blown. As a quick introduction in case you missed it, we heard certified CPA and tax strategist Larry Brown talk about how it was at a tax strategy workshop where he realized that the relationship with his clients and his business model needed to change. To hear all about it, go back to episode 24, Your Law Firm's Secret Weapon, Tax Strategist. We've got that linked in our show notes. For now, pour yourself a glass of milk because our John is about to get spicy. The following is a clip from Chapter 7 of the audiobook. If you're reading along, skip ahead to page 51. For some context, Arjun is talking about the difference between the oath of a lawyer and the oath of a CPA. Now, he had just gotten done reciting the oath that he took when he was admitted to the Florida Bar in 1998. I feel the need to mention that he couldn't recite the oath without raising his right hand, and our camera guy and myself laughed at Arjun mercilessly for that. Okay, but I digress. So he had just finished reciting the oath that he took, and he's now getting ready to recite the Florida's Oath of Admission for Attorneys. Now, Arjun is going to make the plea, and I'm going to echo that here, that you not turn the dial because it sounds like it's going to be boring. I promise he'll get to the point pretty quickly, and it'll get exciting from there. All right, let's roll that clip. As a representative of clients, a lawyer performs various functions. As an advisor, a lawyer provides a client with an informed understanding of the client's legal rights and obligations and explains their practical implications. As an advocate, a lawyer zealously asserts the client's position under the rules of the adversary system. As a negotiator, a lawyer seeks a result advantageous to the client, but consistent with the requirements of honest dealings with others. And as an evaluator, a lawyer acts by examining a client's legal affairs and reporting about them to the client or to others. So no matter which state bar you are admitted, I'm sure you're going to find Florida's oath of attorney and bar rules of professional conduct to be pretty familiar and intuitive. Yes? You might even say, this is common sense. You might have even zoned out and been thinking to yourself, but our John, what you're saying is so obvious, why are you even saying it? That as a professional advisor, of course we owe the client a duty of loyalty, right? Okay, remember when I told you to buckle up? Well, now you need to hold on tight because we're about to look at the world through the lens of a CPA. The following are just a couple of excerpts from the AICPA's Code of Professional Conduct. It's not the same as what we think of as lawyers. Point three zero zero point zero three zero. Principles of Professional Conduct for a CPA. The public interest principle. 
members should accept the obligation to act in a way that will serve the public interest, honor the public trust, and demonstrate a commitment to professionalism. A distinguishing mark of a profession is acceptance of its responsibility to the public. The accounting profession's public consists of clients, credit grantors, governments, employers, investors, the business and financial community, and others who may rely on the objectivity and integrity of members to maintain the orderly functioning of commerce. This reliance imposes a public interest responsibility on members. The public interest is defined as the collective well-being of the community of people and institutions that the profession serves. In other words, your CPA has sworn an oath to act in a way that will serve the public interest. And your CPA's public consists of not just you, but also your creditors, the government, employers, investors, and the business and financial community, and others who rely on the objectivity and integrity of your CPA to maintain the orderly functioning of commerce. And so this reliance imposes a public interest on your CPA, who you are seeking counsel and strategic advice from, and the public interest is defined as the collective well-being of the community of people and institutions that the profession serves, not just you. Okay, now you're thinking, what? I thought my CPA was my advocate. No, I thought my CPA was on my side. Uh-uh. I thought my CPA was supposed to be zealous about advancing and protecting my interests. So did I, until I learned this stuff the hard way. Did I mention that I have a lot of battle scars? Perhaps this will be easier for you to understand if we stop using the abbreviation CPA and I simply spell it out for you. Your certified public accountant was trained and took an oath and practices under a set of rules that requires them to protect the public against you. Uh, Arjun, I, I think you mean my CPA has sworn an oath to protect the public and me. No! Your CPA took an oath to protect the public against you as an entrepreneur. As you're about to discover in the next chapter, their Bible, the General Accepted Accounting Principles, GAP, was created to protect the public against you and me as business owners. Spicy, right? Woo, buddy. All right, you may be thinking, but Arjun's just a lawyer. Just. So of course he thinks that. So... Let's hear a little bit more from tax strategist Larry Brown, who is both a CPA and a lawyer. Here's what he had to say about the oath of a CPA and his own light bulb moment when he realized that some changes needed to be made to best serve his clients, which in turn led to massive growth in his business. Let's roll the clip. So for those who are listening then, um, Larry, can you talk a little bit about, you've, you've mentioned that there are some accountants that are themselves scared of the IRS or that they are not advocating for the clients the way that they should. How do our listeners know whether or not they have a good accountant? Well, l let me give you some some background. Many people who are who are having their taxes done are having them done by CPAs. And again, I'm I'm a licensed CPA. And of course, CPA stands for certified public accountant. Okay. The public part is very important because the, I, I went to a continuing education program not too long again for, uh, ago for CPAs. It was an ethics program. And the first slide on the program said, a CPA shall not place their own interest or their client's interest ahead of the government's interest. Uh, I, and, and, and I did a double take. I read it again. 
CPAs cannot put their own interests or their clients' interests, emphasis on client, ahead of the government's interest. And that I'd known that, but I'd never seen it in writing. That is an ethical candidate for CPAs. CPAs are also ethically obligated to be conservative. Okay. And there's not a CPA out there who will disagree with me. These are ethical canons. We often say that uh, CPAs are all about compliance. They're all about accuracy. You know, file the return and make sure it's an accurate return. Um, that's a given that if a return is going to be filed and it's going to be accurate, what you're looking for is an advocate. And so law lawyers contrast the ethical obligation to be conservative and to be concerned about the public interest with a lawyer's obligation to be a zealous advocate for their clients. Now take that mindset of being a zealous advocate into the tax world, and it's a completely different approach to preparing taxes. You know, before I met Arjan and before we started the tax strategy workshops, we were pretty much like every other tax preparer. We do probably about 1,200 tax returns a year. So we do quite a few tax returns. But we were like most tax preparers. Tax season comes and everybody dumps their information off on you. All of a sudden, we're trying to get the returns done. We've got deadlines to meet and it's all about getting the returns done. And at the tax strategy workshop, people would ask the question over and over again, why isn't my CPA telling me this? And it occurred to me that we weren't telling things like this to our own clients because we were always in the rush to prepare the tax returns. At that point, we changed our business model. And we said, we're doing our clients a tremendous disservice by not meeting with them on a regular basis. So we said, now, if you want to become a client at our firm, you have to agree to meet with us four times a year. So that by the time April 15th comes around and we're filing your tax return, there are no surprises. And, and it's been a wonderful mo model. I think all of our clients would say they, they love the way that it works. Something that I have heard both Larry Brown and Arjun say is that a good CPA is worth their weight in gold. Period, exclamation point, two exclamation points. And now that you know the difference between these two odes, you can ask the right questions of your CPA, and you can have confidence that the people that you trust with your finances are your zealous advocates. Consider this your public service announcement from Profit First for Lawyers. All right, that's all we've got for you today, folks. Stay tuned next time as we speak with a member of Arjan's inner circle who has spent much of his career growing multi-million dollar companies and who shares some of the best advice he's gotten in the field. You're not going to want to miss this one, folks. We'll see you there. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Profit First for Lawyers. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, tell a friend. And buy your copy of the book at ProfitFirstForLawyers.com. Your future self will thank you for it. And we will see you next time.